Hello guys, I'm Paul McWhorter and I'm here with lesson number 21 on using the Arduino microcontroller. Hopefully you've been with us through the first 20 lessons and have learned a lot of neat stuff. Uh, what we have done on our lessons so far, we've learned how to use sensors and various actuators, but so far pretty much what we've done is, is that when we take readings, we send those readings over the serial port and then we have a serial monitor and we just watch the re readings scroll by and maybe if we change something we can see them going up or see them going down. And so we see that we've got our circuits working and that we're talking over the serial port and we have our, our sensors working and all that's good. But the truth is, is that in most projects, what you would want to do is you would want to, you would want to have some way of saving, <clears throat> of saving that data. And turns out I think the easiest way to save the data is to get one of these little SD card loggers. Uh, uh, basically it's an SD card reader and writer. And they're not very much at all. The one that I'm using is the Virtua Botix, the Virtua Botix SD card uh, uh, reader and writer. Uh, I've got a link. You, it's easy to find, but if you want a link for the one I'm using, go to toptechboy.com. Okay, go to Arduino lesson, Arduino lesson number 21, and I've got a link there in, in case you need some help finding it. All right. The other, uh, there's other SD cards that work very, very easily as well, very well, uh, as well from other manufacturers. It's just that if you use this one, everything will be exactly like uh, what my tutorial is. Uh, but the other, the, the other card should operate very very, very similar to, to what I'm talking about here. If you already have one, definitely just go ahead through the tutorial and there's a good chance that a lot of what I'm saying will apply to yours as well. Okay. Now, if we're going to be saving data, we need to somehow be taking data. And so the data that we are going to be taking is we have the most excellent Adafruit BMP 180 pressure sensor. Okay. And we have that thing hooked up and running. I'm not going to go over in this lesson how to hook up and run the BMP-180, but if you need help with that, I have a full lesson on that. Go to www.toptechboy.com, using Python with Arduino, click on that, and then if you come down here, I believe that it is about lesson number nine. This tutorial shows you how to hook up the BMP-180 sensor, and if you come over here, it shows you how to hook it up, and it's got some sample code that should get you going. And so at that point, you should have your sensor working and you should have, uh, you should have it reading, uh, reading data. I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go to this lesson number nine and get that software to start with. And so here is the software. And again, it's using Python with Arduino lesson number nine. All right. So we click here. <clears throat> I'm going to copy that code. And then I'm going to come to a brand spanking fresh new Arduino environment and I'm going to paste that code. <coughs> okay, just one note here. Make sure that you know that on the Adafruit uh, pressure sensor, we are using their API library version one. They've come out with a version two. I like version one better. Okay, so love you guys at Adafruit, but but version one of your pressure sensor library is better than your version two. So we're going to be using the version one and then this is, uh, is what loads that library in. I just tell you that in case you go out and, and load the, 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 the library from Adafruit, make sure you know which one I'm using, version one. All right, so now that I've done this and I've got this hooked up for that uh, lesson, let, I, before I go any further, let's just make sure the pressure sensor is working, right? Before we go and do a whole bunch of coding, let's just make sure we're sitting there and we're streaming data. So we look at the serial monitor, and yes, I'm measuring temp measuring and printing temperature and pressure. So at least I know I'm starting with a working circuit. I'm starting with a working sensor. So now what we want to do is we want to start working with this card. So rather than just sending the data out through the serial port, we want to dump that data to this card. And it's really pretty darn easy to do that. There's a couple of libraries we're going to need, and we load the libraries up at the top of the program. And the first one, the good thing is both of these libraries come with the Arduino, so you don't have to go install a library or download it. You just have to load the library into your sketch here. <clears throat> so we're going to do a pound include. And the first one we need is the SD library. So that's sd.h. Okay. So load the S SD library. Okay. Then we also need the SPI. Okay. So we're going to go include, okay, 
all uppercase SPI dot H library. So this is load the SPI <coughs> communication library. All right. I guess I should also say you need to hook up this. Uh, for, I'm sorry. I, I should tell you how you hook this up. Uh, this. Uh, uh, SD card reader. It's really very simple, but if you go again to uh, technology tutorials toptechboy.com and you go to uh, uh, I keep doing that, I'm sorry. You go to Arduino lessons, okay, and then we're on Arduino lesson number 21. Okay, that's what I'm doing now, lesson 21. And what I do here, I have a table that shows you how to hook this up. This has got two rows of pins, but don't worry, both rows are the same, so you can hook to the top row or the bottom row, or you can stagger between the top and bottom rows. It's like every connection has two pins that you can choose between. If we start over here on the left, uh, ground goes to ground. Let me make sure that I'm telling you the truth. Yes, ground goes to ground. Uh, there's a 3.3 volt connection. We don't use that because I'm going to connect to the 5 volt. I think this is kind of like an either or thing. So 5 volts on the SD card reader goes to 5 volts on the Arduino. CS is chip select and so the next one over is CS. <coughs> chip select goes to 4. MOSI goes to 11. SCK is the clock, that goes to 13. MISO goes to 12. And GND, ground, goes to ground. So there's a ground pin on this side and a ground pin on that side. I connect both of those up. All right, I don't know if you really have to, but I just connect both of those ground pins up. Now this is something we haven't really done before, but but this MISO and MOSI, what these are is this is this is a protocol or a technique by which components can talk to each other. So like if you have microcontroller that you want to talk to a microcontroller or a microcontroller to a pretty advanced component like this SD card reader, you can talk using this SPI. It means serial uh, peripheral interface and the kind of terminology is like MOSI for the output serial interface and MISO for the input serial interface. So it's like output and input uh, input data. So it's it's a little bit new but but it's nothing it's nothing all that hard. You'll, you'll see the code it's real easy to do this. The main thing for right now is you get all of these pins hooked up correctly across here. All right. Hopefully that's clear and I'm sorry I started developing the code without uh, without going through and showing you that you needed to do that. So now you've got this hooked up. Now you do the include your SD library, include your serial peripheral interface library, SP I inter, uh, uh, it .h library. So we've done that. Then these are the libraries that the pressure sensor uses. These are the variables that we set up for the pr pressure sensor in that lesson. <coughs> and now what we need to do, and uh, we are now in the void setup. Oh no, there's a, before the void setup, we got to set up our variables for the uh, SD card. One thing is we need to tell it where we're connecting to it for the chip select and so we're going to set chip select is equal to 4 okay set chip select equal to 4 and why do we do that we do that because remember over here we said we were hooking chips chip select up to pin 4 on the arduino so we got to kind of let arduino in on what our game plan is Right. Up until now, I think we've talked about ints for variable types, floats for variable types, strings for variable types. <coughs> I think we also did a uh, unsigned int. So if you have really big integers, you need to use unsigned int. We're going to have a new variable type today, and that's where we need to have a variable to, to, to use to interact with a file object. And so that type of variable is a file, F-I-L-E. And since we're going to have a file object associated with this, uh, with this uh, data card, what we need to do is set a variable up for that. And I think I will call that my sensor data. Okay, so that'll be a file object. Okay, variable for uh, working with our file object. Okay, <clears throat> you can name that whatever you want, but I think that's a pretty, I think that's a pretty good name. All right, in our setup, we turned on the serial monitor. We still need that. This my sensor dot begin. Remember, my sensor was the pressure sensor. We set it up here. We named our pressure sensor my sensor. So my sensor dot begin turns the pressure sensor on. So we turn the serial port on. We turn the pressure sensor. Uh, we turn the pressure sensor on, and now 
we need to uh, wait for that bell to stop ringing. Okay, so now what we need to do is, this is a little bit goofy and don't worry about it uh, getting into all the details, but this SD library really, really, really wants you to uh, hold on to that pin 10 and not use it for anything else. And you see, even though we're not using pin 10 here, it wants us to hold pin 10 as an output. And if we do that, everybody stays happy. So sometimes you just got to do what the library wants you to do, and it wants us to keep 10 pin and tell it it's an output. All right. Okay. So we're just going to reserve pin 10 as an output, don't use it for uh, other parts of circuit. Just leave it blank, you know, don't do anything with it. Now we need to actually fire up the SD card, and we do that with sd.begin, and then we got to tell it where it's connected. Where was it connected? Chip select. Okay, we got to tell it the chip select, and we define that up here as being 4. All right, so we are going to initialize the SD card with chip select connect, connected to pin 4. All right, yeah, so far this is pretty easy. So far this is pretty easy. It's not, not going to get much harder than this, I don't think. Okay, so now we come down, and what we're doing is in the void loop, we're saying make a temperature reading on my sensor, which is our pressure sensor, then convert that temp C. The number that comes off the pressure sensor is in C, so we read it, read it into temp C, and then we convert it to F. We create a temp F. All right. Then we read pressure. So now I have a temp F, I have a temp C, and I have a pressure. All right. So that's all what we did before. Now, <coughs> what we're going to do is we're going to print out our results, and since we're doing a serial dot print, we're printing that to the serial monitor. All right, at this point, before we start our printing, and you'll see later why I want to do it before, I need to open up this file. I need to open up a file on this SD card. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say my sensor data and why do I call it my sensor data? Because that was that file variable that I defined. I said this is the variable I'm going to use to work with a file. <clears throat> so the file name is my sensor data. And what I'm going to tell it to do is I'm going to tell it to go to the SD card, SD dot, and then what do I want to do? I want to open a file. What file do I want to open? Well, I can name it here. <coughs> and I'm going to call it PT data. Txt. All right. <clears throat> One thing to understand is this wants a really short variable name. This is like one, two, three, four, five, six. Txt. <clears throat> and earlier today, I had a long variable name and I could not get this thing to work. And so I'm not sure what the cutoff point is, but you know, like six or seven characters and it'll work. If you make it much longer than that, it doesn't work and it doesn't give you an error. And so short file names on this thing if you want it to work. So what that's saying is you, you're going to create a file on this SD card, okay, and you're going to open that file up. If the file is not there, it will create it, okay? If the file is there, if, if the file is there, it'll open it, and then it'll append the data to it, okay? So if there's already a file there, it doesn't overwrite it, it opens it, and it appends the data. <coughs> so if you want to start with an empty file, you need to delete that before you get started, because otherwise it'll just sit there, and it will just, uh, Overwrite. Uh, I mean, uh, append to the append to the existing data. Now we got to tell it how we want to open it. We we want to write to it. So I'm going to say file underscore write all uppercase. Okay. So this is saying open pt data dot txt on the SD card as a file to write to. So when we do this file write, when, when we open it this way, it's going to let us. It's going to let us write to it. 
I think that looks pretty good. I think that looks pretty good. So we created this object, my sensor data, and it's associated with an open file on the SD card. <coughs> now, sometimes you can have something that's glitchy, like maybe you try to open it and it doesn't open. So what I got to do is I got to test and make sure that I've opened the file. And if it's opened, then do these steps. But if it's not open, don't worry, it'll loop back around and it'll try to open it again. But it's just you need to have kind of a gate in here to make sure that before you write to it or do anything with it that you've actually successfully gotten it open. So if I say if, and then I just say my sensor data, like this, what this does is, is that if my sensor data opens and it's open then this is true if for some reason it didn't open then this is going to be false and it's not going to do any of these things and so for the remainder of the program <coughs> all of those things I want in this clause so I only want to print if the file opened and I only want to write to the card if the file opened so if the file opens, I want to print to the serial monitor, so I still leave this in there so I can still look at the serial monitor and see if I'm getting good data. And then after I print to the serial monitor, I want to write to the card. Okay, so <clears throat> how do we do that? How do we write to the card? This is kind of the point of the whole lesson. My sensor data, and you just do a dot print. Okay, and what do I want to print? I want to print temp f. And where am I printing it? I'm printing it to my sensor data. What is my sensor data? It's an object associated with the open file on the SD card of ptdata.txt. Hopefully that is clear. So we're going to write uh, tempf to the SD card. All right. Now, <clears throat> remember what we want to do is we want to bring this thing into Excel. Yes, we want to bring it into Excel. And Excel likes nice, neat tab delimited or comma delimited uh, uh, data. And so what we want to do is to make it easy to read in Excel, we want each line to have three things. We want it to have temperature, and then we want it to have a comma, and then we want it to have pressure, and then we want it to go to the next line in temperature, comma, pressure, next line. And if we do that, we're creating a nice text file that's very easy to read into Excel. So we, we want to print tempf, but it's a print, not a print line, because we want to stay on that line so we can put the comma in. So then I say my sensor data.print and now I'm going to put the comma in. I'll put it in as a string, okay? Right comma to the line. Now, my sensor sensor data <coughs> dot print and this is going to be the pressure, but this is the last one on the line, so this one we want to do a print line, print ln. We're going to print pressure. Okay? write pressure data and go to next line. All right, so I printed on this line, on this uh, card, on the file on the card, I printed temp, I printed a comma, <clears throat> and then I printed pressure. Now, very important, you have to close the file, okay, because you can't just come up and every time through here say open, open, open. You want to open, you want to write your data, and you want to close it. Then come back, open, write your data, and then close. And so then what we do is my, my sensor data, data dot close like that. Close the file. All right. I think that looks good. Let me get rid of some of these excess white spaces here. I think that's good. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure the temperature, measure the pressure. We're going to open the data file. If the data file open correctly, I need to put a comment here. Only do these things if data file opened successfully. All right. Only open the file. Only uh, do these things. Which things? Between there and there, if the data file opened, and if it did open, then we're going to do we're going to print to the serial monitor, and we're going to write to this card. Okay, I have a good feeling about this. I think this is going to run. I don't think that I made any mistakes this time. All right.
you probably have already caught me in the six. No, it's going to run. Look at that. Okay, so it's downloading. And now if I open up this monitor, what I should see, once this thing gets all the way downloaded, I should see, let's see, yeah. Okay, so you see how it's printing temperature and pressure to the serial monitor. The good news is, since these print statements were inside of this if my sensor data, that's telling me that it's getting inside of that loop. That's telling me that it's opening my sensor object up, and that's telling me probably there's a very good chance that it's writing it to the card since the file is open and I'm inside this if statement. So I can sit there. Now let's see. Let's see what we can do. It should be sitting there, and we should be logging data at this point. <clears throat> Let me see if I can get the data data to move a little bit. I put my finger on the temperature sensor and look at that. We're up to 86 degrees. I feel 87. I just felt under a lot of pressure to get it up to 87 degrees. Okay. I, I'm going to see if I 88, 88 degrees. Come on. I feel under a huge, there it goes, 88 degrees. All right. And then I can take my finger off and it will start cooling back down. <clears throat> so when we look at the data, we should see the temperature going up and we should see the temperature then start back down. Well, how can we get the pressure sensor to read higher or lower? Well, if we elevate it, the higher the, 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 the elevation, the higher the sensor is, the lower the pressure. So let's try that. I will come back over here, and I will kind of lift this up as high as I can uh, reach, and the pressure should drop. I'll stay there a few seconds. Okay, and then if I come down to the ground and put it on the ground, <clears throat> the pressure should increase. Okay, so let's get about 10, 20 data points there. So the pressure should, should be increased down there. Now, if I come back up, the pressure should go down. Okay, and then if I come back here, it should be about in the middle. All right, I should have logged that data if things are working the way I think, and they probably are. I should have logged that data, and we should look at it. Now, I wish there was a useful way for me to take this card out of here, but I'm not sure of a graceful way to do it. You know how you never want to just rip an SD card out of your computer, but here, I it just it's a simple text file and it seems to not get corrupted. And so what I do is I just come over, press, and then pop it out, and I have my SD card. Okay, so let's close this and let's go see if we can look at that data now. So I come over here. I plug it into my computer and then it sees it and then I open it up here and look at that there's the data file that we created let's take a quick look at it all right and what you can see we're just looking at it in the notepad as a text file but I have a temperature I have a comma I have a pressure and then I go to the next line and so this is just a really slick let's just glance at it no big surprises uh, it ended well, and so this should be very easy to read into Excel. So let's close this. Let's come over to Excel, and then this is the way you would read it. You would come in and say open. All right. What you got to do is you got to tell it all files, not all Excel files. You have to tell it all files. All right. And then what you got to do is I've got to navigate to it. I got to go to my computer. It's one of the cards that's plugged in, and there is the data. Now. Excel wants you to help it import it, so it wants to know is it fixed width or delimited. Well, it's not fixed width. The, you know, there could be different sizes of those numbers. It's delimited with a comma, so we say delimited, and then we go next, and then we say it's not delimited with a tab. It's delimited with a comma, and then at this point I should say finish, and boom, look at that. First column, temperature. Second column, pressure. All right, so let's see what we can do now. We ought to be able to graph this. So I should be able to come over and say insert, and I like to insert scatter, and I like dots with lines. Look at that. <coughs> Look at that. That is our temperature data. Remember I put my finger on it, and it got up to 88 degrees. I take my finger off, and you've got this nice classic exponential decay in temperature back down to its uh, approaching its uh, starting to approach its original temperature so that is pretty slick let's look at the pressure data so I'm going to come in and this is in Pascal's but I'm going to come in and say look at the scatter and put that in look at that look at that that is beautiful so uh, yeah okay so what did we do we came in and we uh, had a uh, had it on the on the uh, desktop and then remember I put it way up high and then I brought it back down low 
And so that looks just really, really, really good. Let's see here. You know, actually, I am misspeaking because you know what this is? That is when I put my thumb on it. Okay, that is when I put my thumb on it. And when I put my thumb on it, I'm covering up that little hole, giving it a really, really big pressure. And so this pressure change was associated with me putting my thumb on it. Okay, and so this is something, you know, we got to kind of keep track because remember, it was after I took my thumb off of it. That is when I started standing up. So this was not me standing up and putting it on the floor, putting it high, putting it on the floor. What we would need to do there is we would need to get rid of this data. And then in here, hopefully, we can see that data. And so let's come down and kind of get rid of that off of the chart. And then hopefully, we should see that other data. Let's keep coming down here. Does, I hope it makes sense what I'm saying. That OK. Yeah, just a little bit more, and we should be past that big hump. What is it, like two more data points? Okay, here's what it is now. <clears throat> so here was starting at the table, and then I put it up high, and when I put it up high, the pressure dropped, and then I brought it to the floor, which made the pressure higher than being up high, and it made it higher than being in the middle of the table. And then I brought it up high again, but probably not as high as I had it the first time. And then I brought it back to the table. And so you can see there's noise in the data because this is really amplified, but you can see that I'm picking up here pretty clearly. I'm picking up like a six or seven foot. I can distinguish a six or seven foot change in elevation. It's just to me pretty amazing that just a six or seven foot change, uh, you can, you can, it's a, it's, it's sensitive enough on the pressure sensor to pick up that tiny minute pressure change that you would get from a change of, of six feet in, uh, in, in elevation. So I think that's pretty neat. Okay. So we're able to launch data. We're able to take that data off an SD card. We're able to put it into the computer and then read it into Excel. And so that is just a really big deal because if you were to use this on something like a weather station, you could now bring it in and you could analyze your data or chart your data in Excel. If you did something like this as part of a high altitude balloon package, you could come back, you could take that SD card and you could look at both temperature and pressure of your flight. And so this is a really powerful case. Capability. Thanks for tuning in. This has been Paul McWhorter. Join us again very shortly for the next le lesson. Hope you guys are enjoying these. Maybe think about giving me a thumbs up. Maybe think about uh, subscribing to this channel. Take it easy, guys.